Hi, everybody. Okay. So, hey, Desiree. Um, I have to say, I was more nervous about doing uh, this live Instagram than I have been in a really long time. In fact, <laughs> even put makeup on, um, which is an old uh, mm, thing I used to do when I would feel insecure. So, just revealed. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, what I want to share today, and thanks for showing up. Hi, Hava. Hi, Mike. Hi, Maddox. Hi, Animal Lover. Hi, Kristen. <clears throat> um, so, what I am, um, what I'm sharing about, which I actually could have written about, it might have caused me less distress than doing it like this, is I went back in my past, I think I talked about it a little bit, um, where I am for the last two years before I go to India is a place where I have had all of my um, old things stored. So I have all of my memorabilia of my past as an actress. Um, and I know I have not wanted to, I've had a lot of discussions with Jacob about this as well, because I have really wanted to blot out the past of the fact that I was an actress. And, um, and I can't, that's like just a part of me that it's the past and I don't want to keep living in it. Um, but I, um, I think it's really important that I, I was thinking of what I wanted to do with all of these things. And, um, and, and I have so many, um, old behind the scene photos and dolls and watch and shoes and I have so much stuff and I was thinking um, what would be better to honor what I've done and to put it out there for you guys if you're interested and I know it's so odd for me to talk about because I never talk about the past of acting that much um, and we already did. We did two behind the scene photos from Xena uh, Polaroids and we put them on eBay under Hudstones. And I've got a whole bunch more. They're all um, personal and they're all, um, I think I, I only have a copy of one of them. Um, but the rest are all one off. So the one, the two that we put up, and so I'm really clear with both, with both of you, with both of you, as I'm talking to myself, with, um, with all of you, is that the money, specifically the money that I would earn from selling these photos, would all go to support me on my spiritual quest in India. So I feel like it's a win-win for the people that would be interested in having them, um, and hopefully they would get joy from them. And for me to release in love my past as well, and in order that exchange would help me grow spiritually. And not only help me, because any money I spend in Amritapuri, India, which is the ashram that I'm going to, um, would go to serve Amma's World Charities. So it's... Um, I don't know why it makes me so uncomfortable. I think the whole thing of acting, I've tried to distance myself from it so much. And um, and my friend was saying, you know, it's a part of you and when people want to talk about it with you or want to acknowledge it, um, it's tricky just so you have an understanding what it's like to be a human being and to have done something in the past and have everyone remember you from that past and yet that feels really a long time ago to you or it was it was an amazing experience it saved my life it absolutely the particular show I'm talking about is Zeno it completely shifted and changed my life and I'm really grateful for that and it was a an amazing time of a lot of joy and a lot of personal struggle so I have such different feelings about it and also that um I'm glad someone just wrote you, your acting brought joy to my life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, 
and and when I talk about that particular role as well, like I don't really connect to anything else I did except that, which was probably because it's the it's the one that um, was the biggest show I had done. It was the most famous of all the shows that I've done and and, uh, and that character was me. The character was me. Um, and what do I mean by that? Like I have, I feel like there's so many directions I can go about talking about this. Um, and hold on if you can writing, cause I want to hear what you have to say, but I'm just going to talk for a moment and then I'll read what you have to write. Cause it goes so fast. I won't be able to read what you're saying. And I do want to witness you as well. I want to share this together. So just hold off on writing just for a moment. So when I, when I, this morning I was holding, um, Renee gave me her iPad and we were looking at a picture to put up just so of an old picture of Kalista to put up on the eBay headstone. So people, headstone, so people would know what it was. And, um, and so someone had made a breakdown of that character and I, I never read it. I, and I don't, I couldn't even tell you, like, I know the trajectory of that character somewhat, but I. I think I've watched myself maybe once in pieces of that show. I've never watched the whole show. I have a lot of um, respect and um, mm, pride about being a part of that show because I think that show brought so much light to the world. Um, it was very different than doing Melrose Place, which was, I don't mind playing a bad guy at all if it enhances light. Um, and I don't mind playing a bad guy at all because it, it, it's very easy. It's much easier than playing an angel. It's really hard playing an angel for me. Um, but I think what I want to say is that that character, what I've learned from that character and what I, I would like to share with other people from that character is we've all been hurt in our lives. And we've all hurt people in our lives and it's varying, of course. I think when I was reading through the description again this morning of it, I was aware that Hudson melded with Callisto. There's such a similarity to it. When you feel like you've been damaged by another or harmed by another, I think there is an important period in your life that you have to acknowledge it and mourn it and feel it. But if you hold on to it, if you, it, even if you have been a victim of something, if I don't work through it, then I become the victimizer. If I don't work through that victim mentality with time, with help, then I can become so wrathful, so sensitive, so aware of danger and be able to lash out very quickly. And that character is an extreme of that. So I understood that character. I think I was cast as that character because energetically, when they saw me, they were like, well, I think she is that character. So, and and the, um, the way that that character moved, um, I don't know why that's happening. You guys don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, the way it changed and shifted was also so beautifully done where it was all in, um, in righteous victim. She was a victim of what had happened to her and, um, there was no quelling her victimhood. There was no quelling her pain. And with that, no quelling the pain, just the sense of revenge kept coming up of wanting to take revenge, of wanting the other person to hurt as bad as you hurt. I think every human being can relate to that to some degree, except people that are really, really like well brought up with lots of love and tenderness, but even they might understand it. And then it acts out, then it be, makes you a monster. It makes you ugly. It makes you uh, the, um, the one that wants to attack. And it doesn't mean that you're bad. That's the trick. The trick is when we make that person who's acting really badly, the bad guy, I don't mean not put them away if they're harming people. I mean the sh pain and shame of keep making them bad. Nothing ever changes. It won't change. It won't change them 
And then you stay separate from that within yourself as well. And we don't get healed. And um, the thing I do love about that show is that that the character that I got to play in all of her um, shame and rage and hatred was able to transform back to light, which is where I believe we all, we all are. We all originate from, no matter what kind of amazing messes we make of ourselves in shades of grace from day to day. So that is also in my life what I, it's so interesting how um, I would sit in the plane heading to New Zealand with a script in my hand and I would look at the script and I'd always be surprised that that script was a reflection of my life of what was going on in my life at that time and uh, and it would make me laugh in some awful way but I'd be like I really relate to this and it it's interesting now that I want to go to Emery Tipuri, India and I believe we come from white light as well and um, and I want I would like to um, keep expanding my own consciousness and my own growth and keep surrendering the places that I feel um, victimized that no longer serve me, that don't serve the atmosphere, that don't serve other people. Um, because anything that, uh, this is my belief, anything that I think about constantly, especially if it's lower thoughts or angry thoughts or victimized thoughts, I'm putting that out in, in, in the ethers with my thoughts. It's affecting plants. It's affecting my friendships. It's affecting the energy in the room. So, and it's affecting my cells. So, so for me to keep going inward, this is what I would like to do to keep expanding myself in compassion and love and humility. And it's a hard thing to talk about humility because I always feel like it's really arrogant to talk about it. But surrendering more and more in less of being so important or so connected to my likes and my dislikes feels like there's a pathway of growing in a way that I don't typically grow in the Western world with all of the physical things around me, all the food that I like, the places that I want to go. When I'm in the presence of my teacher, it's incredibly challenging. And yet there's so much love and my heart expands so much. And there is pain too, because the ego holds on tight. But that's what I want to do. I want to grow. And so that's why I decided to, I wanted to call it death of an actress, because that part of me that was an actress that I don't regret at all. And I have an understanding that people want to connect with that aspect of me, because that's me. That's how you were introduced to me, most likely all of you. So that's what I want to do with these pictures. I want to put them up on eBay. I'm going to show you what I have and see what you think. And we put two up already, but I've got a bunch. And I was talking to Renee and she's like, ask them if, if they want you to put them up all together so they can just see everything. Um, and then we'll go from there. And I can sign them and I can personalize them if that's what you would like, if that's interesting to you. And they're all one-offs. They're all like... They're all, like a lot of them are Polaroids from the makeup artist um, or the continuity person, and they even have writing on them from the people. Ah, uh, thank you, that's really nice. Um, so these are the two that we put up right now, and then I'll stop and see what you guys have to say. Kristen, you have to stop talking about my hair. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Like, my hair doesn't matter. So here's, here's the photos. Uh, one of them, we just, I remember, this is the first, um, the first series I ever did, the episode I ever did. And we were waiting around to shoot and it was really hot and the cicadas were out. And I, uh, Callisto had um, a whole army and Thaddeus, she had Thaddeus too. And so they were like, do you wanna do a picture? And I was like, no, I don't wanna do a regular picture. Let's do a picture all together. So I was like, why don't we do a pyramid? <laughs> Cause I'm wacky. So we did. So this is the picture of me on the pyramid with my my bad guy crew. So that's the one we put up. And then the second one we put up, which has a little hole in it still, probably from Nyla, from the pin, because it was hers. This is for costume continuity. 
um, where I tried on the costume for the first time of the demon, the demon costume, and I loved, 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 loved my wings. And the people were behind me, and I was trying to tell them how to move my wings so it would be, like, really super creepy. And that's the picture of the Hudson bat, the Callisto bat, without the makeup on and everything. So those are the two that we have right now and that we put them up on eBay. And um, it's interesting because Jacob's like, just give them the facts. And I'm like, oh, it's so not my nature to just give facts. I'm so much more emotional than that. So here you have like more than you ever needed to know. So I would love to know your thoughts about this. Do you, I can show you more pictures so you can see them. Um, I, yeah, I loved playing the Callisto. Like, I loved it. It was just... It was healing on such a level to play that character and to release that rage and that anger. Um, you're awesome. Do you talk to anyone from the show? Yeah, I have... Um, the uh, Two of the stunt doubles are still really, really close to me. Um, sadly, my dresser and another woman that was um, offset, on set sometimes... Uh, both passed away and they were, um, that was really shocking and not together. Um, yeah, Kalista was, did I, I did not keep the wings. I didn't keep any, any of those things. Um, so would you like to see more of the pictures? Do you, would you like for me to put them up? And I, um, would you like for us to put them all up tonight so you can see all of them? Um, I would like to know more about Callisto. Your acting is really good as a kid. It moved me. I missed that. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. Yeah, that was a hard one, those two. Um, yes, yes, please. Yes, more pics. Okay. Uh, yes, Callisto is the Joker. For sure, I believe that. So here are the pictures that I have that we're going to put up. Those two are already up right now. They're only up for five days until Tuesday. So people can go there now. It's uh, on eBay on Hudstones. Um, here are some of the pictures. So here's uh, the first show. I believe this is the first show that I did with the ladders, with the my uh, my makeup artist. Uh, the Mollas are coming. I just tied three of them, and they'll be put up today, hopefully. Um, and here's Monty, which is the lovely Leo that I would talk about. She was a dresser, and she uh, she used to have to hold the umbrella over my head, and it would always end up over her head, and I'd be like, she's such a Leo. She's a gorgeous human being. This is my best friend that I brought up, and we actually dressed her up in the Callisto outfit. That's Artemis, and um, we, tr we wanted to put her in a scene where Ted comes in, and my back is to Ted, and then have it be her. And I can't remember if we even did it or not. We might have. I think she was very shy about it. <laughs> I don't think you know what to do. This picture is me and Tartarus looking rather sad. <laughs> for a continuity picture. Here's a charming picture of my personality. So you can get the whole idea of me. So try not to write right now if you, if you could, because I can't read it afterwards. So if you can just wait for a moment. This is great because this is also, um, this is when they started to write on it as well. And I don't know how I got these pictures. They must have like left them for me. But here is a continuity of the demon picture. And they even said it. And here's another picture of Artemis and I being twinsies. So this is my best friend from high school. So this means a lot to me. Um, and she's got a wig on because she was bald at this time. And that's the cat. Um, here's a picture of me in makeup getting ready to look like death for uh, Hercules. And here's another picture of the makeup artist and me giving her a cuddle. And this is the Hercules crew in the nature. I feel like it's show and tell. I think you all probably know what this one is. And this is playing Liz on Hercules. I think it was Hercules. They're not all in order. And then these two are of Liz as well. 
so Liz Freeman, when I played Liz Freeman. Um, and then I've got some bigger ones. And this was a fun one, because this one was just when I played that dead, where I think, um, I want to say Renee, uh, Gabrielle was having a dream about Callisto. This is what kept me warm in wearing that leather bikini, wearing the uh, hot water bottle. Not the human, <laughs> not the human. <laughs> I was very huggy. Here's more of the stunt guys. Oh no, they're not stunt guys, sorry, they're the grips or the lighting guys. And there's Artemis and I. Oh, sorry, Artemis, I don't mean to pinch your head. And then this is how they used to have us um, look like we were riding in the close-ups. I can see if I can find another one of those that's like... Yeah, here's a better one. So the guy underneath me does this. So it looks like I'm riding. Um, I have Melinda and I, both the goddesses. My partner at the time, um, I was a half an hour late coming back and they were all waiting for me. And um, I had to put these white contacts in and my partner knew me so well. Like I have such love for this man. And without blinking, they're like, where is she? Cause I'm not typically ever late. I'm pretty good with time. And, um, and he said without blinking, oh, she's crying right now. And I was, I was in the makeup artist, I was in the makeup trailer crying cause I couldn't put these big pieces of glass in my eyes. And I knew I was under stress to get there on time for work because it costs money when you keep people waiting. It's not great. Oh yes, I have one with Lucy if you wanna see that too. So that's, I have one with Renee and I think it was the script supervisor. You have to remember, these are like 25, 27 years ago. 27 years ago. That's on Zena. And she became my makeup artist. This is actually on set. So Renee is in front of me, you just see her hair. Melinda and I. <laughs> I liked the ones of Melinda and I. I think um, our partners took a bunch of pictures of us at the time because we looked so silly. Um, and then I have these two. This is of the first convention that we ever did. And this is, I have got two pictures of these. I don't, I think it must have been, it, I don't think it was the first time we worked, the first episode I ever did, because my hair is not in braids. So I have two of those, and I've got one of this for the LA convention that we first did. And that LA convention I also have of Ted. And uh, not the first one, I've got the second one I ever did of the conventions <laughs> and the subtlety of my character and how it transformed to a stage diva. And that's our first convention. The first convention we ever did, there was 5,000 people there and we were all like overwhelmed and terrified. And then I've got, this one I don't know where it came from, but it's, it's Hercules. I mean, I don't know who gave it to me. It was Hercules when I, cursed him or uh, poisoned everyone. <laughs> How many people say this stuff like this? <laughs> and then I've got these guys from England that we took at an English convention. So those are the ones, and I think we have these too. These are all signed. This is completely signed by everybody in the English convention. And then I have one, and I don't know where I got this one either. I think someone from set kindly gave it to me because I liked that outfit the best. And that's it. So now I can see you and hear you. So if you have questions or thoughts, now would be the time to ask me. You're dope. I'm not sure what that means, but thank you. Um, what was it like filming, filming Bittersweet? It was amazing. It was, um, 
Um, hold off. Let me answer one question at a time because I won't. I can't. I'll miss all of it. Thank you for about that. I, oh, um, ho hold off on the questions. It's so overwhelming. Um, playing Callisto or or whatever character the the fool of bittersweet was a delightful. It was so much fun. I wish I could sing. I always wished I could sing. My friend Artemis in those pictures has got the most beautiful voice I've ever heard in my life. Um, they tried to see if I could sing and I literally cried when I went to the, uh, the recording studio because my voice was like croaky. Um, but I loved dancing and I loved, um, loved the difference we, it was just so different and vast and interesting and like the whole illusion thing. It was um, going outside the box and I really loved that. So, uh, I don't know about a question tab. I'm so sorry. I feel like very like a dinosaur with this. Um, you're welcome. So, Jacob's there. He just put up the eBay thing. And Jacob wants one of those pictures as well, so you, you're not going to get all of them. <laughs> Jacob and Allie both want one. Do you have any of Ken, Kevin Smith's stories? What was he like? I do have gorgeous pictures of Kevin Smith and I changing um, outfits at a convention. I was wearing, like, some belly dancing outfit, and he was in, like, you know, black shirt and these cargo pants looking gorgeous. And... We just, I think it was his idea even. He's like, let's change outfits. So we did it on stage. We changed our clothes and I was wearing his, he's really sweaty. <laughs> um, and he wore my like bright yellow outfit. We had a big gorgeous smile on, a big crown on. He was, um, he was amazing. He was um, very thoughtful and very kind and had a strength to him. He was very different than a lot of actors. Um, he didn't feel um, like he ever got caught up in the fame. And I know, you know, this this is the little that I know of him. But he was always very, very considerate and respectful to me. I mean, I remember once we were on Hercules together and he was like, so what kind of men are you attracted to? And we got in this whole conversation, both in our little costumes, talking about what we're attracted to and in people, what we find sexy and what we don't find sexy and... Um, and he was really fun to play off of. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have any, I, I was such a, um, hermit that most of the time I was in my trailer. So I don't have like, unless I had to come out of the trailer during that time, I would come out or if my partner or one of my partners happened to be on set, I would be out more. Um, but most of the time I was healing a lot from a lot of the stuff I was going through. Um, what is my favorite comic book villain? I don't have one. I don't have a, a comic book villain that I can think of. I, I mean, I loved Callisto. I, lo I loved her. She was my favorite. She's my favorite. She's my favorite because there's so much pain and it's stuck and, um, and her rage was so cathartic for me personally. Um, and she was so deeply wounded and vicious and victimized. And I don't know, I just loved her grubby, gorgeous, ferocious insanity and her joy, her crazy joy. She was also really batshit crazy. And, uh, and, and you could see I could see glimmers of her that if she hadn't gone so dark, she probably would just be a hoot to be around. She'd be really funny. She'd be really funny and odd and who knows? Who knows what she would have been? Um, in light of your own spiritual journey since the show, what do you think of Gabrielle and Zena, their trip to India? I think that's what you wrote. I didn't get all of it. I didn't see that, so I don't know. Totally of character, but you were amazing as Premal as Jen. Thank you. Um, did you feel like healing while playing the angel? Um, how did you learn to imitate Lucy's voice? Okay, slow down, guys. So, um, I, you know, Rob Tappert directly called me at home because my character was basically killed off. And he said, this is what we're thinking of doing with you. What do you feel about it? And I actually thought the whole 
um, through line of Callisto being redeemed and then the great forgiveness, like Zena forgiving her, taking on her own sins because she had also been a part of creating those sins. And then, uh, and then my spirit asking if I could be reborn into her. I like, he was like, is it too weird? And I was like, no, not for me. Like it was so beautiful, like redemption stories for me. It's all about that in this life for me. It's all about how can I keep healing is such an aggressive word, but how can I keep expanding my consciousness? How can I keep, I'm never satisfied with um, what I already have. And I've learned that the outside of society of like fame, money, um, beauty, partners, all these things don't fulfill me. They don't, I've had them. I'm grateful for them. I don't mean I've had an amazing amount, but enough to know that it's not enough and that there needs to be something else. And that something else is way smaller and less intellectual than what the world tells you is going to be going to make you happy, but much harder to get to. The peace of mind that I'm looking for is not in the outside things. And yet, um, of course I have to take care of myself and I have to eat and have a roof over my head and all of those things. Um, and I don't feel particularly, and greedy is a wrong word because I don't think it's greedy to earn money. I don't feel like I need an abundance of it. I just need enough to continue my path. Um, I have a non, I have a non Xena something. Um, have you found some of that peace of mind? I have, I have, I have, um, I have found more and I always knew I would too. And I always knew that as I grew older, I would also, I would somehow my older years were going to be filled with a lot of love. I've always known that. It makes me kind of sad. I don't know why the sadness comes up or tenderness maybe. But my upbringing in my 20s and 30s were so challenging to get through. They were so, it was so hard. Um, I love the rain. I don't know why you're asking me if I like the rain, but the rain is my favorite. A raining when it rains. Um, you're abundant in every every aspect. Thank you. Um, I'm happy. Kalisto got an, a happy ending as well. Um, I, I didn't ride horses that much, and now I'm getting distracted by even answering what I was just answering because there's so many questions that you guys have. Um, how did you deal with the self-hatred? I struggled a lot. Okay, so let me stay with that one first. So self-hatred, this is a really important one. It still can come up. It's still present. The 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 habit of feeling victimized by people is it's an interesting thing because it feels in my experience and i'm only one person is once you've been victimized by other human beings there is like a wound there that you're i'm still expecting the other people to heal that wound and they can't and never will and even if they could i'm not sure that they could at this point it's my job to heal my wounds it's all my job to heal self and love self and um and how to do that and and how not to do it in some aggressive way of like i should be something different than what i am because that's really harmful i have uh some really good friends that i talk to honestly and i share from the heart and they give me space to cry and be vulnerable and um and that helps a lot um but what i find to be um really helpful is going towards my idea of spirituality. So when I chant and I give something over my idea of giving it over to the all that is, and I may have to do it all the time, but chanting, anything that will quiet the brain down, doing yoga, quiet, quieting the brain down, going for a walk, breathing fresh air, being in nature, eating healthy, doing contrast showers. Um, I am responsible for all aspects of this little universe I call Hudson. And so I, because I'm responsible for it, I have to somehow take the reins when I remember and do what I can. Sometimes it's harder than others. Sometimes it's super easy. Also serving other people, talking to other people, answering questions honestly so other people can relate and not hiding. That, that gives me great pleasure. Not because I'm like, oh, woe is me. It's because we're all human. And especially for the people in my life who've put me on a pedestal, 
literally after the first convention I ever did, I was suicidal the next day. I mean, 5,000 people telling me that I was the best thing ever was awful for me. It was awful. I, I hated it because I knew it wasn't true. Like it was, an, uh, it was a fantasy. I was another human being in front of them that happened to be on TV that you appreciated the work that I did, but people were coming up to me and crying. And it took me a while to do conventions where I could realize I can be of service and reflect it back to them because it's not about me. Like they're crying and they're happy to see a character that was in their living room and that, that affected them in some powerful way. And I love being a part of that. I always will. But it's not about me. It's about what they got out of it and how can I show up for them in a really loving way and turn it back to them instead of trying to hold on to being something other than I am, which is just a simple, confused other human being doing the best that they can to um, to grow more and more. Uh, how were you in high school? I was uh, really beat up. <laughs> I was really beat up. I wore spiked high heel and skin tight dresses and very sexualized and a virgin and really disliked. <laughs> very, very disliked. And I hit a lot. Aw, you're welcome, Bubby. You're welcome. Um, and how was the scream recorded? Did you scream? Yeah, I would scream and they would sometimes have to pull the mic away because it would be too much. Was it difficult to form off screen relationships with Lucy and Renee, given the character you played? Um, I think I didn't feel, um, I wasn't very open. I didn't feel very safe with other actors. Um, I really felt safer with the crew and I felt safer with the stunt people. Um, I feel like sometimes, and it can be my projections that actors can be competitive and, and I, I'm owning this myself. This could have no reflection on any of the other actors, but because of my experience in the past of actors, I tend to want to avoid the actors because <laughs> I don't want to get into competing, um, or something unpleasant. And I didn't my heart didn't resonate with the actors as much as it resonated with the people that became I became super close to. And that's just um, how it is with everybody. It's like some people you really resonate with and some people you don't resonate with so well. But I can say I, um, I really, um, I was just reading that scene I did with Renee. It's my favorite scene ever when I did it with Gabrielle when we played Truth or Dare. And I laughed. I was on the floor reading it this morning, laughing with Renee, my friend Renee, laughing because it was hilarious to me. And I loved um, playing uh, with Lucy Lawless. Like I loved playing off her energy. Like it was easy and fun and um, whip smart and... Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I really found it easy and uh, delicious. I found it really delicious. <laughs> Someone wrote, yeah, she's just not very good at it. I know. I read that on the, I was reading that on the plane the first time. I laughed out loud at that too. It was my favorite part. I'm like, yeah, she's not very good. <laughs> when I sliced open your husband, how long did it take him to die? <laughs> like, it still makes me laugh. I don't know why. It's just really funny. It is a great scene. So, uh, do you have any more questions now? You're slowing down. Um, and we will talk about this more. I also want to ask you, Renee reminded me of this. I have like a bobble doll. I've got really big Callisto dolls. I've got a watch. I've got um, these really beautiful high heel shoes that I wore um, at... Ooh, one of the conventions, one of the really big conventions. Um, do I still get out in nature? I haven't been for the last month. I need to get out. I do run, but I my three-hour hikes I have not been doing. Um, do you get to keep the weapons? You know, they offered me. I think they even said, do you want to keep an outfit or do you want something? And I was like, oh, good God, no. Um, thank you. You're an awesome human being. Thank you. Do you like the forest? I love the forest. Um, and I just listened to something about CSI was awesome. I loved playing the biter. I loved, loved playing the biter. Actually, she was also, it was too short, but she was awesome. 
uh, someone wrote about the hip workshop, but I didn't get to hear what that was. Um, what's the link in eBay? I think um, Jacob has already written it, but it's Hudstones. And we'll put it up again. So Jacob, if you're listening, or Renee, you guys can put it up if you don't mind. Do you think Xena was glad Callisto killed Perdiccas? It seemed... Uh, I think that would be a mixed thing. I think, um, I mean, you're asking me an opinion about it. Like, I'm not, I'm not Lucy and I'm not Xena, but from an outsider's point of view, I would say um, she wouldn't want to cause that much grief and pain to someone she loves that much. And yet I bet there was a huge relief because, because she loved her that much and wanted her for for herself for it's a tricky thing to have love and jealousy and feeling left out lord knows um Zena looked relieved well i don't remember what she looked like i didn't i didn't watch it that carefully but yeah i would imagine thank you someone just put it up the the thing do you have any advice or thoughts or advice on moving through depression and addiction so i do the the addictions stem even even for me i had chai this morning because i was nervous to talk about xena i was like oh god i'm going to talk about Callisto, and then renee got all nervous and she's like are you okay i'm like you're making me more nervous <laughs> like stop doing that um addiction addiction when we're addicted to something it's that's our solution so even if it's a chai or if it's heroin that's our solution to try to get out of the pain so we can feel better. And we tend to want to always go, go towards the things we like and give pleasure to the body, whether it's food or kindness um, or um, comfort or sleep. We want to feel good and we're not really good at being able to have tolerance for things that we don't like. Be this is my point of view. Because we are so individualistic as well, um, and our individualism matters so much, we tend to forget we're a part of a whole. I'm going into a direction that's really big. My, my thoughts about addiction are, there's something that's not getting met inside and it has nothing to do with the outside substance of what you're using or what I'm using. And until I'm able to sit still with that grief, that anger, that sadness, that great need, that fear of death, whatever it may be, then I'm going to keep reaching out unconsciously for something else to try to fix me. That just seems, but it's, it's so simple, but it's so challenging because we're not taught how to do it. We're not taught to stay still. We're taught, go buy a bunch of things. Go buy things you'll feel better. Go eat whatever you want to eat. Have alcohol, smoke pot, do what you need to do. But we're not taught, which is why I want to go to Amrita Puri. We're not taught to sit with your feelings and be still with self. And we don't know how to do that. And because we don't know how to do that, we cause so much pain to ourselves and other people and we demand other people to make us happy like we all do it we're like you should make me happy and if you're not making me happy then i don't want you really <laughs> like not everyone's going to make you happy like it's not and it's not their job to make you happy it's your job to make yourself happy so that's i, I hope i hope that helps in some way i hope that touches your question and um, and the depression is connected to the addiction, you know, it's connected because you don't want to feel that depth of sorrow or lostness or fear or nothingness that you want to feel something and you want to take that. What happened to me after the hip opening workshop? I was sleeping like I had narcolepsy for days afterwards. I even skipped my insomnia medicine for a couple of times. Good. I imagine that's Hava. Um, I don't know. It sounds like uh, during the hip opening, hip, hips have everything to do with releasing emotions. And knowing a little bit about you that I do have, uh, you're opening this up, so I hope this is okay for you. You have a very smart, fast mind, but you live in the mind, in the intellectual mind, so much that it doesn't give you an opportunity to slow down and be the human being. And so when you did that hip opener, you got to be in your body more and more and do that deep, deep breathing. And so that starts to unwind that nervous system. 
And perhaps you needed that much sleep. Perhaps you actually, your whole system was like, thank God. And at the same time, I may not know what I'm talking about. And you should check out with your doctor to see if everything is okay. Because you're not in front of me and I want to make sure that you are okay. So look at all aspects of it. Um, our intense lockdowns in Australia helped me a lot to do that. I believe that. Yeah, these two years um, gave us all an opportunity to really go inward. And I really loved shaving my head and meditating every day. I really loved it. Um, uh, what do you think or how your relationship with Kali... What do you think or how's your relationship with Kali Ma? A lot of people don't know who Kali is. Um... Um, the deities that are involved in Hinduism are aspects. They're not, it's not actually like all these different gods. They're aspect of God and they're very old. It's, it's tribal and Hinduism is a bunch of different tribes coming together. And then when I mean, you have Bhagavad Gita, you've got the Upanishads, you have all these writings. So when people misunderstand Krishna and uh, Shiva and Kali, there's so much more to this than just, oh, I'm worshiping this one God. It's this aspect. So Kali represents uh, the universe. That's why she's black and she's naked and she's fierce. So she's the one that births you and she's death that takes you back. And she has her all these human heads cut off because our egos are connected to our heads. And if you're willing to surrender yourself to God, then you can become awakened. So even Hindus don't necessarily understand the benefit of that energy of Kali. Most Swami, Swami is not the right word. Most enlightened teachers love the idea of Kali. They're not necessarily attached or pray or need to pray to Kali, but that is the goddess who removes everything from you, everything, all your creature comforts, your relationships, everything. And when you have an ascetic, someone who said, I'm renouncing this world because I want to open up to something bigger than this plane, they're going to love Kali. Do you have uh, any book recommendations, please, for meditation, chanting, or just your favorite books? I always recommend Autobiography of a Yogi to start. Always. Um, what's sitting on this phone right now is Death Must Die. It's an autobiography, but really it's, an, it's not an autobiography. It's a diary. So two diaries that I love, one is Death Must Die and the other is Daughter of Fire. But I think to really fully understand them, you have to have your own guru. And a guru is not just a teacher, that's someone who's actually died to themselves and um, are enlightened. And how do you explain that? I'm not enlightened, so I can't even explain it. So anyways, I'm getting away from your other, it's funny, I don't mind talking about spirituality, I love it. I feel very limited and I know that you're only going to understand what you're going to understand from your level of understanding and my level of understanding as well. So, and it can be very, that's why religions get really gnarly because it's very hard to describe something so deeply personal. Um, you are a superstar, so cool, you're something. Weren't you thinking about writing a book? Yes, I, I'm still thinking about writing a book while I'm in India. Where do we find our guru, I need one of those. Um, she, they wrote Laugh Out Loud, but I think um, for me, I read Autobiography of a Yogi and I had a really bad experience with someone that I considered a guru and it, it, that's, it, it almost took me out. So um, I was done with gurus and, um, and when I read Autobiography of a Yogi, I had a deep dream about the image of Shiva and I'd never had anything like that before. And then someone, um, a really good looking man in my acting class asked me if I wanted to go out to see a holy woman who hugged people. And that's, and I didn't take her as my guru for about 20 years. Cause I was like, nope, 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 nope. Um, the book is amazing. And you can actually listen to the book also on audibles. Uh, ben Kingsley reads it and it's profound and beautiful. It really changed my life. How do you like India? Uh, I don't like it and I love it. Uh, my Western side is like, why is nothing finished? Why is there trash everywhere? Like, <laughs> why don't they clean up this trash? Um, and it feels like everything's not finished somehow. And yet also, um, 
especially at the ashram, there's more, there's more bliss there than any place I've ever expanded. And it's in the simplicity of being of service to others and getting out of self-centeredness. And, um, and there's also, um, you know, I would say it's, there's a s simpleness with the Indian people. And when we say simple, we mean dumb. That makes me want to cry. But you know, that's because our intellect can be so cruel. Our intellect does not, it does not help us all the time. Our intellect is cutting. It cuts, right? It doesn't love, like a needle unites. It unites. And in order to do that, if you think of when you were a child and how open you were and how, how you could play with anything, how easily you could forgive, perhaps you could forgive. I could forgive very easily when I was little. And I could always see the, the kid that was suffering and I'd always include them. And, um, and I, w I had a real, I had my own karma that I came in with as very stubborn, very opinionated and really loving and really open. And then life happened and I hardened. And so going to India, it's like going back to that place of that heart opening with more wisdom, more awareness, more awareness, more discernment is what I would like. And then to serve however I'm meant to serve, however it looks like, whatever it looks like. It's not up to me. That is so true. Sorry, I missed that one. Uh, what was your favorite scenes to film in Zena? Well, I think I answered that one. My my favorite one was the one with Renee. And then I also, I think I've talked about it when I was in, I got caught in that cave when I was immortal and uh, and Gabrielle, come on, she's not an idiot. She she takes my hand and thinks it's Zena, but it's all Kalisto's hand, obviously. And I come out and I remember being really happy that day. And my partner was at my partner at the time was on set and it was such a beautiful day. And it was like the first day I felt like I really inhaled deeply fresh air and it was so joyful and I felt so loved and supported. I really liked that day. I really enjoyed that day. Um, I also liked fighting. I think fighting was always fun for me. I liked, um, it was like dancing. So to do the fighting was always enjoyable. Um, or to shoot fireballs, I'd like to do. <laughs> it was very simple. Um, yeah, I heard that they, they did go to India and they changed their arcs. It doesn't surprise me. India is ancient and it's, I think it's the most chock full place of enlightened humans throughout history. And, um, as Egypt was, but Egypt, uh, or rather the Egyptian times fell in towards itself and India, India is becoming much more Western as well. Um, ah, you like the chatting. How long has it been? It's been almost an hour guys. Fireballs are cool. Do you have any more questions? I'm so, do you want me to put these all up? Should I put all of these pictures up? Are you guys interested in the, um, it's really quite funny. It's like this big bobblehead of Callisto. Uh, uh. Um, therapy, someone's, it's a long answer to that question. Therapy doesn't have to suck. It, you, I think in order for therapy to really work is that the person on the other side must be incredibly conscious. It's not about fixing yourself. It's about that consciousness being really, really clean without any judgment. So when that other person is really clean and able to hear, you get the chance to hear yourself and start to heal in it. But it's, um, it's rare to have a person on the other side be that aware themselves. It's not about fixing. Okay, good, you're interested. Yes, all right, I'll put up all the pictures. I'm definitely not cool. I'm so geeky. I'm definitely not cool. That's the other thing I wanted to say, and I got off track. So I was listening to this Brahmacharini, and I love her. Her name is BK, uh, what is her name? Let me tell you what her name is, so at least I can. Her name is Sister Shivani. You can see her on YouTube. And she was talking about when someone gives you praise, who are they talking about? And I really love this because especially for an actor, because we're like, we're wired. I mean, all of us are, but especially actors, you're like clap at the end, right? Good job. We loved you. Or even we love to hate you. We'll, we'll accept that too. Um, 
but we become as human beings we become addicted to others praise and other people are going to see you differently some people are going to watch this and be like she's bananas some people will be like oh i really enjoyed her i really i loved her character why is she talking about spiritual things why isn't she talking about Z why isn't she acting anymore i don't get it so everybody has their own opinion from where they're coming from in that moment and what shivani was saying was when someone says something good about you it's not about you it's about where that person is in that moment they're looking for good in that moment and when they say something unpleasant they're looking for the unpleasant thing in that moment so that way you're free you're totally free you don't have to make it about you because then you're not going to rely on if someone likes you in the moment or someone doesn't like you in the moment because it's constantly going to change we can't rely on it and our own personalities are the same you can't rely on your own personality or your own mood um, you can, I think, the more and more that you're able to be conscious with yourself and witness it. And that's the path that I want to go on, that I'm so attracted to, that I feel like I don't have a choice, actually. I don't even feel like I have a choice. Your yoga content is so necessary. It changes lives. Thank you so much for saying that. It has changed my life for sure. For me, spirituality is to work on myself and how I can keep helping, improving and helping people. I missed it. it went too fast. I'm sorry. Um, you're such a spiritual badass and so authentic. Um, nah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I Something about Rob Taffert, but I didn't see what you wrote. Did it hurt to do the Kalisto scream? Never. It was freaking delightful and I loved it. And they actually came to me and they were like, Zena has a scream. You need to do a scream. Can you do some cool scream? And I was like, it was literally on set. And I was like, I don't know what to do. What do you want me to do? I have no idea what to do. And, uh, I was like, how about if I just scream? And I did it, and they were like, that's it. How do you feel about having worked with so many famous actors on such famous shows? Uh, God, my first response with uh, respectfully, like not to be disrespectful, is I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I feel more grateful. Um, I feel grateful to be hired. I feel grateful for the opportunity to have gone through those strange times. Um, I feel really most grateful for Xena because that affected my life the most, more than any of the other shows that I did. Um, I think that's my answer. It's helpful or spiritual opening. I didn't hear that. What was it like working on Hercules set on the occasion? Was it different vibe from Xena? So I think I've shared about this before. Totally different for me. So, um, and this is 25 years ago. So also, keep that in mind. And, um, I know that, um, it felt much more masculine on the Hercules set. Um, and it felt n not masculine and necessarily the most helpful way to me. It felt kind of confining and, um, which didn't confine me. It actually made me even more bananas and spit. And like, I was, <laughs> I mean, I had more fun because I was like, I just didn't, I felt, I felt in my own being a bit more sexualized on that show than I did on Xena. I don't know why. It was the same outfit, different crew. Um, yes. Yes to all the pictures. I would like it if you would be at the Xena convention on November so I can meet you too. Now I'm in Los Angeles from Italy. Welcome. Welcome to America. I would, I've never been to Italy and I would like very much to go to Italy. Can you expand the idea? Okay. Oh, I don't know. So, um, Renee's letting me know. Someone asked if I'm making more astrology readings. Uh, maybe. Um, I love Zena. I only have like a month and a couple days here until I leave for India for about six months. So, so I'm getting my malas all set up. I'm doing the pictures all set up. Thank you for your support. Truly, really, thank you so much for your support. And please know that any of the money that I get all goes to living in an ashram and all of that money that I uh, pay for my rent and my um, food and anything that I buy in that ashram all goes to support her charity. Like it's just, I don't know, it is beautiful. So, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Jacob, for putting that up. Jacob is so awesome. Um, I would like to come to Italy. Thank you guys. Thank you all so much for this time. Um, I will come back and do a couple more. Maybe I'll do once, once a week before I leave. Um, and if you have more questions, think about them. If you have other questions, 
You can always write them on Instagram or write them on Facebook. Um, t I tend to forget about Instagram. I tend to go to Facebook because I'm a dinosaur. Um, that's how older people are. Um, I missed what that person said. Hi, Kate. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Hi, Kate. Um, ah, I just feel like you can receive that, Kate, right now. I just feel like that went right in your heart. Um, thank you, Hudson. It was such a joy to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mitzi. Um, I will come back. I will come back and we'll talk about other things and we'll put all this stuff up today. And thank you so much for your generosity and your kindness and your questions and your curiosity and your generosity also for, um, it's, it's such a good group. It's such a kind group, such a kind group. The people that, um, really enjoyed Xena, such a open hearted group. And I did all, uh, I'm not even going to say it. Not, I'm going to say it. So, good. I'm glad you guys came. And I will keep this recorded so people can watch it if they want to see it another time. Okay. All right. My love. And we'll talk again soon. We'll talk again next week. Okay? All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>